what's up everyone it's Kat from CatWarrenPhoto.com and thank you again for tuning into my channel today as promised to you before um, I'm going to show you six characteristics of mood photography now first of all don't forget to like and subscribe to my to my channel um, second of all what exactly is mood photography well mood photography adds another dimension to your photos because let's face it Everyone can just take photos. You can have your exposure, your composition right on point. But if your photo doesn't appeal or it doesn't speak to your audience, then you just have a two-dimensional photo. There's no depth to it, right? So if you can actually get your audience to start interpreting what they want to see versus what is really in front of them, then you got something really good. And that's what I want to show you today. So. First, out of the six characteristics, underexpose and paint with light. So take for example of this particular photo. It's such a mundane photo of, um, you know, English muffins and coffee. Everyone eats them, everyone sips on them, at least I do. But you want to add that little sensuality and, and drama to it by actually underexposing it. Why? Because that is the reality of it. That's what the human eye actually sees. If you look at a lot of the movies and cinematography, they don't really have a high dynamic range. And that's because it's not really natural. You know, that's not what the human eye sees. So again, underexpose just a little bit and then emphasize your subject by shining some type of light, whether it's, you know, sun beaming down from the window or flash, just add like a trail of light to your subject to emphasize what the audience needs to see, okay? Second characteristic, high contrast utilizing light. So you want a nice combination of darks and lights. And you can do this by utilizing your light. So if you want moody, sensual photos, then you don't necessarily have to have flash with it. You can just have natural sun. Um, or if you want a dramatic, edgy feel to it, then yeah, go ahead and incorporate that flash with some gels perhaps. Now, as you know, if, if you are familiar with my work, I'm huge on you know, huge on flashes. I love flash photography. That's my go-to, that's my comfort bubble. But I can also see my photography changing and evolving to a more natural vintage feel. At least that's what I wanna get into. But it's hard for me to relinquish the use of flash because I love flash so much. But as you'll see in my, in my work, later on down the road, I'm probably not going to be using as much flash as I, as I do now. All right, but I, di I digress. So high contrast is the second characteristic. Let's move on to the third. Your choice of tones, all right? Do you want warm tones or do you want cool tones? What exactly are you trying to portray to the audience? If you want a cold feeling, cold, uncomfortable type feeling, dreamlike effect, maybe blue and green tones would actually be better. Whereas if you want a warm, cozy, sensual, inviting feel to your photo, then stick with the warm tones, reds, yellows, oranges, what have you. Fourth characteristic, show action in your photo and show motion. So have your subjects interact with, with something. If your subject is a person, that's perfect because that provides you know, the audience with some type of complexity. What is that person feeling? What are they doing? Um, what are they thinking about? You, know, you can convey that through the source of expression on their face. Are they looking away? Are they playing around with something? Are they smoking? You know, that all of those actions convey some type of mood, right? And again, mood is always subjective. 
depending on the people that actually see your photo, you could actually have a lot of interpretations as to what that mood's supposed to be. All right, and that's, that's the mission. So now if your subject is a thing, if it's just an object, then what is its purpose? So English muffins again, coffee. Coffee is meant to be sipped on. English muffins are meant to be eaten. And if you can show an action where, you know, someone is actually sipping on a coffee, then that's perfect, okay? Now, this brings me to my fifth uh, characteristic. How are you gonna capture that? Um, are you gonna capture the details by zooming in? Of course, you've got to zoom in to get those details, all right? The key is in the details. Um, so in this particular example, I was actually, um, you could see that I had my fingers circling the rim of the coffee mug, okay? Um, it kind of provides you a sense of mood, elegance, class, um, sensuality to it. Again, it's in the details. Now, going back to what coffee is supposed to do, you sip on coffee. Um, another example would be capturing someone that's actually sipping on it. But instead of cap capturing the overall, you know, essence of that person, go ahead and zoom in to just their mouth down as they're about to, you know, take their first sip of that coffee and how good it must be, you know, just, just to, I don't know, just to feel the steam, you know, from the coffee coming up and brushing up against her face and then the smell of the aroma, or the aroma of the coffee. Um, you know, what type of coffee are they sipping on? Is it like a mocha coffee? Is it just a robust, I don't know. I'm getting too much into the details, but if you can capture all of that stuff in your photo just by one photo, then more power to you. You know, you have a really good, deeply dimensional image right there, okay? I know I'm crazy, but it's all in the small things, it really is. And then last but not least, capture the, your perspective and the overall story by zooming out. And I know I just contradicted myself, but after zooming in on something and then capturing that subject's complexity. You want to conclude your storyline and your photos by zooming out and seeing the surroundings that your subject is within. Um, it just, I don't know, it just gives you another dimension of, uh, of what you're trying to convey. So the more you, you know, the more perspective and frames that you have, then the better. So those are the six characteristics, guys. You got underexposure, high contrast, your choice of tones, showing action in your photos, capturing the details as you zoom in, and then essentially capturing the overall effects and setting and surroundings by zooming out. So what do you guys think? Drop me a line, let me know, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And so again, thanks so much for your continued support, y'all. And uh, stay tuned for next Sunday for another photo or another image. Take care. Bye.